Hey friends, it's Steven with Leviathan Snakes, and for this week's video, we want to talk about the state of the ball python breeding market in 2023, specifically fall of 2023. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that this is actually the third year in a row that we have done a fall update, like a fall state of the market kind of video, where we want to talk about, do we think it's a good time to get into the market? Do we think that it's a good time to get out of the market? What projects do we think have a lot of potential? What projects do we think are kind of on their way out. Anyways, these are all things that we want to discuss in this week's video, so let's jump in. The very first thing that we want to look at is the macro level, so that way we can get an idea of what's going on, what is the context that we are in right now in fall of 2023, because I think that that is probably the most important factor when we are looking at all of these different things that we're going to be talking about in this week's video. And overall, if you're looking at the economic outlook of the entire country, possibly even the entire world, it is a very, very stressful, tough, uncertain economic time. And a lot of people have probably heard about this. So over the last couple of years, I would say since like right before COVID all the way up until now, there has been record high inflation. We're talking about like eight, 9% inflation year over year, then another year where it's like seven, 8% inflation. And even though inflation is slowing right now, it's still at like five or 6% inflation. So it's slowing, but it is still way more because when you compound these things together, you're essentially looking at, at a pre-COVID price till now of like 30% increases essentially across the board. And this isn't 100% true on everything, but when you are looking at basic necessities to live, this is rent, this is food, this is utilities, roughly a 30% increase across the board from pre-COVID till now is about average. And if you think about that, wages haven't really kept up with that level of inflation. Essentially what this means is that the general population across the board has 30% less money that they can spend on luxury items, which in our situation, ball pythons or reptiles are 100% luxury items than they did previously. And for a lot of people, not saying this is true for everybody, but having a 30% cut to their paycheck is a huge amount because if they were good to go beforehand, maybe now things are really tight. So because of this, I think that it is influencing so many different aspects of the hobby. And specifically when it comes to ball pythons, I think that we are seeing this in that there are less people buying as many snakes as they were doing it before. Ultimately, what ends up happening with this specific situation is with less people buying less snakes, there is overall a significantly weaker demand for reptiles and ball pythons in fall of 2023 than there was in fall of 2022. Now, I don't think that that means that there is no demand because we're gonna get into this in a little bit. I do think that there are people who are still buying, but I think that it is significantly more selective now than it was last year or especially the year before when and there was a lot of COVID money going around where people could just buy things because they hadn't really been hit by the massive levels of inflation yet. Getting back on subject though, a massive decrease in demand has ultimately done a couple different things to the market. One, it has drastically reduced prices. If you're looking at ball python prices, even though inflation across the board in the economy has gone up, ball python or other reptile prices have significantly gone down when you're looking at them year over year. I would be, I would not be surprised if you looked at the data and it showed that on average, a animal, doesn't matter what morph, doesn't really matter what project, has fallen at least 50% in value uh, from 2022 to the exact same time in 2023. And this can be really, really hard for a lot of people who got in at those high COVID prices because ball pythons take two to three years to grow up. So if you had gotten in during 2020, 2021, 2022 even, while prices were still really, really high from the COVID demand, and then before you're even able to make a clutch of eggs, you see the prices get cut in half. It can be really, really discouraging 
for you to invest in more animals. And because the newer breeders aren't buying as many new animals because the animals they already bought, they're seeing such a drastic and quick fall in price, it makes them scared and uncertain about continuing to invest in this hobby if they're trying to make it into a full-time business. In addition to that, I think that a lot of the people, the influx of people who came in during COVID, like us, have started producing animals in earnest. So all of the hatchlings, essentially, that they bought during 2020 or 2021 have started breeding, and this is providing a lot of animals into the market that weren't really there before. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything bad that all of the breeders who got in during COVID are now able to breed animals, but it is increasing the supply during a time when the demand has been significantly weakened. And because of this, I think that what's happening is that new breeders, as they post their clutches for sale and the animals don't sell right away, they are very, very quickly cutting their price because they feel that the only way that they're going to be able to sell their animals is if they are the cheapest on the market. And because there are a dozen and other breeders just like them who haven't necessarily built up a very strong brand who also think the only way that they can sell their animals is if they're the cheapest. When that next person gets the exact same combo, gets the exact same animal, they're going to price it even lower. And that race to the bottom is what's drastically affecting the fast, fast, fast fall in prices. So ultimately, it's almost like one negative thing after another is feeding on each other and it's creating a situation where I feel that the entire market doesn't feel confident about investing in animals right now. Now, I do think that there is one exception to this, and that is the people who are already breeding who have already seen success. Because the people who've already started breeding, maybe they started breeding right before COVID or at the very early side of COVID, where they were able to make a return on their investment so they aren't as worried about selling their animals because they've already done it before. I think that those people are still willing to invest in high-end animals that progress their projects forward but they are still being significantly more selective because they're still feeling the pinch of the massive inflation in the general economy. So where they might have been buying, let's say 10, 20, maybe even $30,000 worth of animals before, now they might be buying $5,000 worth of animals, maybe $10,000 worth of animals. And they're not necessarily buying a bunch of different animals like they did when they were very, very first starting out. Now they are being hyper-targeted. They are finding the one, maybe two animals that perfectly fit into the projects that they already have, and then they're making those purchases. And generally, when they're making those purchases, they're making those purchases from people who are leading the industry in the various projects that they are working on. These are people like Brock Wagner, Brad Boa, Canova, Ozzy. These are the people who are able to get those amazing, leading edge, cutting edge animals that are so specific that nobody else can produce them or nobody else has a very good chance at producing them. And they have the brand name, the brand value to attract the attention. So ultimately, I know I'm kind of going on a lot of stuff and I haven't really made a point yet. What I think that this means is that there are less people getting into the hobby. And the people who are getting into the hobby aren't diving in as deep as people were diving in during 2020, 2021, or even 2022. But there are still people coming in. I think that the new people are kind of focused more on the pet side right now. And the people who are making big investments in it are the people who got in during 2020, 2021, 2022, and have found some level of success. So they are willing to step up to that next realm. But when they step up, they're not just buying animals willy nilly, they are buying the exact animal that they need. So it's so important to be targeted with the exact right animal at the exact right time. And for people to know that you have that animal. As a new breeder or as somebody with a few years of experience like us, what I think that the market is currently saying is that right now the market wants pet animals that are beautiful 
and are fairly inexpensive. And by fairly inexpensive, previously I used to say $500 and under was the pet range. Currently, right now, I actually think that that's $300 and under. We have found that these animals have been selling very, very well at local shows, the $300 and under. And online, the animals that are significantly more expensive, like three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, those animals have been selling very fast and very quickly online to people that we already knew and we had built up relationships with. So I personally think that if you are going to be getting into the breeding hobby, you should focus, hyper focus on projects. And we've talked about this in the past that there's a whole debate between diversification and specialization. I personally believe that if you are too diversified, if you get a little bit of everything, it's really hard for people to know what projects you're working because if you say that you do a little bit of clown, a little bit of pied, a little bit of desert ghost, a little bit of hypo, a little bit of clown pied, a little bit of sunset, a little bit of puzzle, a little bit of monsoon, you aren't going to seem like the go-to person for any of those projects. Instead, if they want a clown and they're going for a leading edge clown combo, they're gonna to go to Canova. If they want something from the Sunset Project, they're gonna to go to Brock. If they want something from any of these other projects, if you are too diversified, your name isn't going to be the person that they think of when they are trying to find that one animal that's gonna take them to the next level. So again, as I've said multiple times, I think it's so important to know what projects you're working and appropriately, effectively market your brand towards those projects. So that way, when people do need a, let's say, super asphalt het clown, they know that you are in the super asphalt clown project in that you love it and that you are so passionate about it that the second they think of super asphalt clowns they think of you so overall recap i think that the economy is in a significantly worse position than it has been in previous years and this stress this rampant inflation and decrease in buying power has ultimately decreased the demand for luxury items including reptiles because there are less people buying luxury items, because there's less people buying reptiles, it is increasing the amount of time that animals are sitting on morph market or that they have to go to multiple different shows before they're able to find a buyer. And because it's taking longer to sell them and people, the sellers, the breeders are getting more and more desperate, they are willing to undercut each other's prices, which is leading to a very, very quickly decline in project values. I think that once you move beyond kind of the negatives of it, the areas of the market that are still doing well are those that are just now starting to take their projects up to another level, but they're looking for very, very specific animals. They are not looking for any random clown combo. They are looking for a clown combo that is a male that is at least het for something else, and it has multiple different incomplete dominant genes that don't have pastel and it doesn't have spider because they are willing to spend a lot of money on that animal, but they wanna make sure that it fits perfectly into the animals that they already have. On the flip side of that, when you look at the pet side, I still think that there's always people coming into the hobby, but they're looking at not necessarily the $500 animals now, because they're still feeling the sting of the overall economy. Maybe now they're looking at the $200 and $300 animals. And in addition to the $200 and $300 animals, because so many animals now are within that price range, when you are comparing combos that were really, really hot and really, really valuable a year ago or two years ago, and you're comparing them against things that have been like traditionally really, really strong in the pet market, like a bell or like a banana, they're just not comparing. So if you're looking at something like a simple clown combo, maybe like a pastel clown versus a bell, a bell 100% looks better. So when pet owners are looking at these animals and they see a pastel clown, even if it's a female versus a bell, they're 100% gonna pick the bell before they pick the clown and it's causing the clown prices to fall even faster because when it comes into that different market who has different needs and different wants, they don't really care about breeding it, they just want something that's absolutely beautiful, that they're going to love and that they can keep as a pet. So because of this, I think that there are COVID breeders who got in, who kind of focused on maybe simple clown combos, simple desert ghost combos, simple pied combos. And now that they're trying to sell those animals, it turns out that the pet people who are actually 
potentially their customers, would rather buy a single gene banana than they would buy a clown because the single gene banana as a hatchling is just prettier. So overall, I think that there's still room, there's still an avenue to do well in the ball python breeding hobby. I think that the 2023 market has shown that it is absolutely imperative to market yourself, to be smart about your projects, and to not get in over your head. Because if you're in over your head and you have to sell the animals, otherwise you're gonna get crushed by credit card debt or you can't make ends meet it can put you in a very, very risky situation. So I know this video was a bit more negative than ones we've done in the past, but we hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week.